A large portion of the Jewish nation has returned to its homeland, but the heart, soul, and mind of much of the Jewish nation are still in exile mode. This state of affairs must and will inevitably change. This is Torah Nation TV from Jerusalem, and we are interviewing the head of Machon Chilo, Rabbi David Bar Haim. The birth of Prince George was greeted in England with great joy and enthusiasm. The vast majority of the British people love the royal family and the monarchy. What does the Torah have to say about re-establishing a Jewish monarchy? We have seen in recent days with the birth of uh, Prince George in the UK is a very healthy expression of nationhood. Many people in the UK and even in other countries have exp expressed joy and much enthusiasm at the birth of someone who is very likely destined to become King of England. This, of course, raises the question, what exactly is the purpose? Is there, in fact, a purpose to having a monarchy in our day and age, particularly when monarchs nowadays, certainly in the Western world, are, in fact, more or less without any real executive power and are mainly, mainly f uh, serve a ceremonial function? And it is true that I have expressed the view in the past, which I maintain to this day, that it is not the uh, express wish of the Torah. It is not mandated by the Torah that the Jewish people run their affairs by way of a monarch, a hereditary monarch who has absolute power etc., as some people believe. Rather, I believe that this is an option that the Torah allows. And in fact, that the Torah, and we see in the Nevi'im, in the book of Shemuel, Samuel, that this is not the ideal in terms of how a country should be run. On the other hand, it cannot be denied that a hereditary monarchy which serves to represent the long-standing existence and traditions of a nation, as for example the British royal family, which can point to a history of more or less a thousand years, which encompasses uh, modern English history from uh, the earliest earliest times, certainly from the time of uh, William the Conqueror onwards, the existence of a royal family which has survived th through that period serves to galvanize a people, a nation, gives them a sense of, of real meaningful historical existence. It serves to bolster tra tradition and unity and if, in fact, a nation can define for itself a, a purpose, a national purpose, then it serves to bolster and strengthen that national purpose. And the British, and certain other nations as well, such as the Dutch and the Swedish, etc., seem to understand this point, either consciously or at least subconsciously, which is why the vast majority of uh, the British people today, to this day, uh, love and support the idea of a monarchy, even though everyone knows that uh, the queen or tomorrow the king has very little real power. As opposed to a system where a person can be elected into office and elected out of office, where there is no real sense of continuity, where there is a certain break with the past, no clear link to the past at least, there is something that we can learn from this, and I feel that the Jewish people would do well to consider the idea of re-establishing a Jewish hereditary monarchy based on the ancient house of David. There are many people, many Jews in the world today who are descendants of uh, that royal family, 
it is true that we have suffered a great break in the chain, but we also have maintained a knowledge of those families and it would be possible to re-establish such a dynasty, not necessarily uh, for the purpose of re-establishing an absolute monarch, which I already explained is not necessarily the Torah ideal, ideal at all, but even if it were only to be a ceremonial type of monarchy as we see in the UK, I feel that such an institution would serve to change the character for the better of, of Israel, of the Jewish state. It would serve to make the great connection, the great leap of faith and connection between the time of the Tanakh, the Bible, and the present day. The attempt by secular Zionism to make that great leap of faith from the Bible to the present day by, and in the middle, by uh, ignoring, certainly not taking into account or stressing the continuity of Jewish tradition and history and existence in the interim. That attempt, which was once uh, popular and it was hoped that it would uh, forge uh, such a feeling of connection and continuity, historical continuity, that attempt has failed. Today there are very few secular Jews who know very much or care very much for the Tanakh, for the, for the Bible. The re-establishment of a hereditary monarchy based on the ancient Jewish royal family would bring home to all people, Jews and non-Jews around the world, that the Jewish people did not arrive in their land in 1948 or a couple of years before that, that we have been here for thousands of years and this is where we belong and it would give a sense of meaning and purpose and it would add a certain breadth of vision to the state of Israel and hopefully it would have an impact on the general wider public and on the political leadership. And therefore there is something positive to be learned from the feelings of celebration and enthusiasm that we see today in the UK and around the world. Thank you, Rabbi Bar Chaim. And a word to our viewers. If you would like to sponsor or dedicate a video interview with Rabbi Bar Chaim in honor or memory of a loved one, or if you would like to obtain Birkon Nusach Eretz Yisrael, please email us at office at machonshilo.org.